Uh, there's other developments unfolding right now, and you just saw it live here on CNN. The Joe Biden campaign rally, seeing as Jessica Dean is in Pittsburgh for us. She's there on the scene for us. So, uh, Jessica, walk us through uh, the former vice president's bottom line message. Well, good evening to you, Wolf. The bottom line message is that he's saying he wants to reward work, not just wealth here in the United States of America. He made the argument today that this economy is not working for everyone, that it's only working for a certain group of people in the United States, and that he has a plan to build that up, to make more people feel included in that. Some of the ideas that he talked about today, closing tax loopholes, a $15 minimum wage, reversing the Trump tax cuts, also a Medicare public option. Some of the things that he talked about here at this rally in a union hall saying, I'm a union guy. Take a listen to what he had to say. I also came here because, uh, quite frankly, folks, if I'm going to be able to beat Donald Trump in 2020, it's going to happen here. Yeah. It's going to happen here in Western Pennsylvania. With your help, I say this simply and clearly. And I mean this. The country wasn't built by Wall Street bankers, CEOs, and hedge, and hedge fund managers. It was built by you. It was built by the great American middle class. And we heard the middle class over and over again about the dignity of work, talking about that message as well. And you heard him there talking about it himself. If he says if he's going to beat President Trump, he's going to do it here in Pennsylvania. You can bet that he'll be here over and over again, working to get his message across. Now, also today for former Vice President Joe Biden, he received an endorsement from the Firefighters Union. This was a big one for Joe Biden. They talked about it here today, but it also ignited some Twitter back and forth between the president, who tweeted, Wolf, as you mentioned, four times at, at, Vice Pre at former Vice President Biden today. I want to read you one of those tweets. He said, the dues-sucking firefighter leadership will always support Democrats, even though the membership wants me. Some things never change. Now, Biden also tweeting back at the president, saying, I'm sick of this president bad-mouthing unions. We need a president who honors them and their work, and he talked over and over again about the importance of unions, how if he is president, that he will do everything he can to support them and build them up. Uh, it was a message we heard throughout the day, and this crowd here, of course, again, being in a union hall, really soaking it up. Now, next up for the fi former vice president, he will be headed to Iowa. Wolf, it's his first swing through the caucus state uh, since... He made his announcement last week. It was very important to them to get to those early states uh, as soon as they possibly could. So onward to Iowa tomorrow. His first campaign uh, rally uh, since announcing his run for the Democratic presidential nomination. Jessica Dean in Pittsburgh for us. Thank you. Uh, let's get some more on the president's Twitter attacks on the former vice president. Our White House correspondent, Caitlin Collins, is standing by. Uh, Caitlin, there's some concern apparently over there uh, all afternoon. All this attention that Biden is receiving from the president could wind up hurting, uh, actually hurt the president. Tell us about that concern you're hearing about. And they're worried, Wolf, that it could elevate Joe Biden. Now, in recent days, the president, in recent weeks, the president has been questioning people about whether or not they think Joe Biden could beat him. And his uneasiness over Joe Biden entering the presidential race burst into public view today on the president's Twitter feed. But Wolf, as the president is looking ahead to 2020, he's being forced to look back at comments he made in 2017. Tonight, a president usually known for his confidence appears to be unnerved by his latest rival, former Vice President Joe Biden. Aides insist President Trump isn't worried about running against Biden, but he's clearly on his mind. I don't know what the hell happened to Biden. I never saw that before. I've, I don't know. It just doesn't look like the same Biden. I said, is that really Joe Biden? He doesn't look the same to me. Trump referenced the former vice president on Twitter at least four times today alone. And while some advisors are urging the president not to single out any Democratic presidential hopefuls just yet, those closest to the president are following his lead on Biden. Why is he using Charlottesville to launch a candidacy as somebody who was in the Senate for decades, who was vice president for eight years? The White House has been on defense after Biden made Trump's comments about a 2017 white nationalist rally in Charlottesville that left a counter protester dead, a central focus of his campaign announcement. When President Trump condemned 
racism, bigotry, evil, violence, and then took it many steps further and called out neo-Nazis, white supremacists, KKK, that is, that is darn near perfection. After a shooting at a synagogue outside of San Diego left one person dead and several others injured this weekend, President Trump offered a full-throated denouncement of hate at his latest rally. We forcefully condemn the evil of anti-Semitism and hate, which must be defeated. The latest shooting, six months after a shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh killed 11, has put the rise of white nationalism at the forefront of the 2020 race. The FBI says hate crimes are on the rise for the third year in a row. But six weeks ago, after a gunman killed 49 Muslims at two mosques in New Zealand, Trump downplayed the threat. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. His allies say his critics are misrepresenting his so, uh, remarks about what happened in Charlottesville. If you go back and look at what Trump said, Trump said clearly that he was opposed to the white supremacist, he was opposed to Klansmen, he was opposed to Nazis. I mean, he says it clearly. But after the protest two years ago, the president blamed both sides. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. Then, two full days later, after facing widespread criticism from Republican lawmakers and CEOs, the president named names. Those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. The next day, after fuming from coverage that said he hadn't gone far enough, Trump defended his first statement. Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides. Now, Wolf, during an event here at the White House this afternoon, the president did not answer a question about whether he still doesn't think white nationalism is on the rise. But back to the advice he's getting from advisors about not elevating any of these candidates just yet as they battle it out for the nomination, for the Democratic nomination. Other aides who know the president well say that they fear that as he sees more Democrats getting airtime and sucking up some of the political ox ox oxygen, he's going to do whatever he needs to stay in the news. Wolf. All right, Caitlin, thank you. Caitlin Collins at the White House. Let's uh, bring in our experts uh, for some analysis. Uh, David Chellian, uh, he spoke for about a half an hour at this initial campaign rally, the former vice president, Joe Biden. Uh, what did you think? Well, you can see why President Trump has Joe Biden under his skin, why he's getting under his skin a little bit, precisely because of how Joe Biden was messaging today and where he was, right? It was no accident. He was in Pittsburgh. He was taking a union endorsement, trying to show the example, I am the person that can make an economic appeal on middle-class values to these people that drifted away from this party last time and went to Donald Trump. That, and that is why Trump's advisors are so fearful of him. I mean, it was, it was so sort of shocking to my ear to hear Joe Biden. He, it is as if Sherrod Brown did get into yeah, this totally. race. I mean, the dignity of work, real yeah. economic populism. Yeah. He sounded a little Bernie Sanders at times, Wolf, taking on millionaires and billionaires. He continue to call himself middle-class Joe and wear that as a banner of pride. This is the economic piece of the overall Biden rationale for his presidency, which is to campaign on rebuilding the middle class and win back those voters that drifted. Well, on that point, let me play a little clip. Uh, this is Joe Biden moments ago in Pittsburgh. The stock market is roaring, but you don't feel it. There was $2 trillion tax cut last, last year. Did you feel it? Did you get anything from it? Of course not. Of course not. All of it went to folks at the top. Yeah, I mean, that's what David is talking about as it relates to Sanders, right? All of it went to the folks at the top. Look, I was most struck by the fact that Joe Biden is running for a version of the Democratic Party that if you were online on a daily basis, you wouldn't think exists, which is... In the Midwest, in the industrial Midwest, economic, uh, primarily economic voters, uh, middle to lower middle class white voters, it's a very different kind of campaign in, look, where he starts it matters. He starts it in Pittsburgh in a union hall, okay? Nobody else has done that 
and, and I think there's a re you know, the, the Bernie Sanders idea of what the Democratic Party looks like and who it will elect, the Kamala Harris idea of what the Democratic Party looks like and who it will elect, even the Pete Buttigieg image of what the Democratic Party looks like and who it will elect is very different than Biden. And I think that that's a, that, that will be a very clear line. Joe Biden is not running to, to win a poll on Twitter about your favorite Democrat. I don't, I don't really know that he cares all that much about it. It's an interesting gambit. He's clearly in it in that regard.